What do you think was the biggest achievement for Oxfam India in 2011? Uh, I think the biggest thing is that uh, looking back now, we've completed three years uh, since we were formed. We were formed on September 1, 2008. Uh, that first phase of transition is over and as you know it was a difficult transition to integrate six Oxhams into one. So I would say the biggest accomplishment is that that phase of transition is over. We are now a fully Indian organization, well governed with a clear strategy, looking ahead and it was marked, this end of the period of transition was marked by us becoming a full independent member of Oxfam International. So we are a member of the fully Indian organization as a member of the Oxfam International family. What are the strengths of Oxfam India? So as we complete three years, uh, there are several things. I think the first is our governance standards. We are a very well governed organization as is recognized also by Oxfam International. A distinguished board, highly engaged board and providing very clear strategic vision and overall uh, guidance to Oxfam India. Secondly, I would say is the strategy itself. You know, we have a clear strategy in place which is providing us with the vision of where we want to be five years from now. Thirdly, our standards on financial management. This is the third year in a row that we have a clean audit. Uh, we provide very detailed audit accounts in our annual report. I think this is really uh, something that not very many other organizations are doing. So we're very proud of that, that our financial standards are so good. And then fourthly, uh, a very strong grassroots program, 200 fantastic partners doing work on the ground, so empowering communities uh, and, and taking up their causes. Uh, and then the fifth big achievement I think is laying a very, very strong foundation for raising funds within India, mobilizing the middle class into becoming active citizens, active supporters for our work. It has been two years since Oxfam India was launched. Uh, Oxfam India launched its, its strategy. Where do you think we are in terms of its implementation? So as I said, we have a very clear strategy in place. The strategy has three dimensions. One, the themes that we work on, the programs. So whether it's health, right to health, right to education, right to food, domestic violence, disaster program, economic justice program. That is defined with great, great clarity what each program is trying to deliver and so that part of the strategy is being implemented well. Secondly, we have a dimension on geography. We want to focus our efforts in the seven poorest states of India, which are all in the north and the east. Again, we have been aligning our program slowly to that, and that is also going well. It's the third dimension where we say we want to focus on the most excluded groups, most vulnerable groups, uh, which are Dalits, Muslims, tribal people, and women. I would say that on that, that dimension, we need to step up really and look at whether we're really doing everything that we can to bring those groups along into the mainstream. Uh, new data shows now that inequality in India has just risen uh, further, very sharply. We are now in the same league as South Africa and Brazil, which are uh, two of the most unequal countries in the world. And this is worrying. Uh, new data also shows that these groups that are really the focus of Oxfam's work are getting really left behind in the kind of development we are seeing. So poverty data show that the tribal people are about 20 years behind others in India. So they are the most marginalized. Uh, the Dalits and Muslims are somewhere like 10 years behind the others. And women, you know, the status of women, which is such a tough thing to crack, is so low that the new census data again show that we have a declining uh, sex ratio and that uh, it's now the lowest since independence. And that one statistic captures everything that we need to know about the status of women in India, that girl babies and girl children are still being killed and we have a very distorted sex ratio, which is going to be a huge problem in the future. So I think this part, what is happening to inequality, what is happening on social exclusion, discrimination, I think we really need to somehow find a way of, of working much better on that, I think, and sharpen our focus. What are the priorities of Oxfam India for the year 2012? So on the program side, I would say that we have seen in the last year an opening up of new spaces for advocacy, for dialogue with government. Uh, unprecedented consultations were held with civil society, for example, for the 12th five-year plan. Uh, there are now consultations being held with civil society on budget 
and other policies. So for us, we really need to um, bring evidence to bear to really have successful conversations with the government. So putting together research agenda and building our capacity and our partners' capacity to put together evidence from the work that we are doing on the ground. What is working? What is not working? What are best practices? What are worst practices? All of that we need to now really start documenting and taking to government and coming up not just with criticism but with solutions, with actual options for policy changes. So on the program side, that is the biggest priority. On the fundraising side, we need to diversify all our uh, sources of fundraising. We need to, we are doing, we built a huge uh, base for um, in fundraising from individuals, but we need to look at many other options as well. How far do you think our local fundraising strategy has borne fruits? So what we did very deliberately is when we became an Indian organization and started to raise funds in India, very few people outside of uh, the development world, if you like, really knew about Oxfam's work. So we, to build a constituency for our work and to build a base of support for our work, we started by really trying to make efforts to raise funds from individual donors. So we've tried to, we have about 100,000 donors now who support our work and that's the strategy very deliberately, to collect small sums of money from large groups of people. And we can say then that our work is really supported by a large number of people. Through this process, we are also helping to create a name and a brand for Oxfam. We are also trying to create more active citizens who understand development issues and, and who can support our work in many other ways. So I think that work is going very well. With it's, Now we have 21 offices with, just within three years, and that is a fantastic achievement. We've gone out you know, beyond the big metros into smaller towns and so on. I think what we now need to do is really, in addition to that, look at many other sources of uh, fundraising. So we have just started now looking at the corporate sector. That's an important uh, source. We need to start building our relationships with them, explaining our work, and in the same way that we have done with individuals, just try and base a, create a base of support with the corporate sector. Thirdly, try some innovative things. So for example, we have a very exciting event coming up in February in Bangalore. It's called the Trail Walker, where teams of four walk 100 kilometers and raise funds for time. This has been tried in many other countries. We are trying it for the first time. We are very excited about it. And again, we hope it will do both, raise some funds for us, but as importantly, create a base of support for us. Uh, next year, we are also going to look into the options of opening bookstores or some other kind of Oxfam stores. Many country, many other Oxfams have done that successfully, so we really also hope to do that, and so on. So, what we've done so far on the, is on the individual fundraising side, and in the coming year now, we really hope to try out many more exciting uh, products and diversify our base of support. What's your New Year message to Oxfam India staff? So my first, uh, I would like to just start by wishing everybody a very happy New Year. We've had a very successful year uh, and 2012 uh, looks very promising. Uh, it's going to be a very busy year, so I hope staff have taken some time off and are starting the New Year refreshed and re-energized. Um, in February, as I said, we have this huge event that will really test us and involve all of us, the Trail Walker in Bangalore. In March, we have another very exciting event. It's our opportunity for the first time ever to be hosting the whole Oxfam International Board meeting in India. And so that will be exciting that all the 17 Oxfams and their whole boards will be coming to India. We'll be taking them on field trips we'll, to see our work, to see the realities of India. We'll be organizing a seminar for them to understand the Indian issues better. Uh, you know, so that's a great opportunity for us to showcase our work to the rest of the Oxfam family. Uh, and then of course we have all the regular ongoing work. Uh, we have some, as I said, very exciting new opportunities because there's greater and greater opportunity for dialogue with the government. I believe there are also challenges. We need to really work outside of our comfort zone. We need to now start talking to a much broader stake of, uh, set of stakeholders. We need to start engaging with the corporate sector. If we're going to try and get inclusive development in India, it's not going to be by just talking to other NGOs or talking to government. We need to talk to all the different players, whether it's the corporate sector, academics, uh, all, all kinds, middle class, young people, all of them. So that that is a big challenge for us because uh, that's a new way and a different way of working. 
so we have some great opportunities we have some challenges we have to build our capacity to meet those but it's promising to be a very very exciting year and i hope uh, you know we'll we'll have as successful a year next year